I know it doesn't look like much, but I looked for like a year for this thing. <laughs> it's very cold, so this is gonna be a quick little story time. This window was like five hours away. None of my vehicles are gonna make that drive. Um, and so I got a rental car. It's my fault for not renting an SUV just straight up because the prices are almost identical. But in my head, I grew up with a Honda Accord and I fit all sorts of shit. This absolutely would have fit in my Honda Accord in the back seat. Um, but I got a Corolla. They offered to upgrade me to a Camry. Uh, I didn't take the Camry because the pass-through between the trunk and the back seat was smaller physically. It's like a little round thing and it was smaller. The Corolla had a bigger one, so I thought that that would be better for like the Ikea stuff that I had to get passed through. So I took the Corolla, drove all the way to some guy's house like five hours away, and this window didn't fit. We got it in the trunk. We had to tie the trunk lid down. I have a cute little video of the trunk sensor that I drove with for two hours. I drove to the Burbank airport because it is a Saturday, so all the car rental places were closed except for airport locations. So I drove like the wrong direction to go to the airport to ask them to switch me into another car which they did. I didn't know if they would do it. Yeah, it turned out to be a non-issue. They just uh, switched me into like a Mitsubishi SUV, which I didn't dislike, it was fine. I drove to Ikea, got my Ikea stuff. I had left the Suzuki in a Home Depot parking lot. So I drive back to the Home Depot parking lot and it's like 10 o'clock, it's like 30 degrees. The Suzuki's obviously cold. Uh, and I like load everything in, including lifting this window by myself for the first time. Cause when it was in the Corolla, it was like super wedged in there and I couldn't get it. So one of the rental guys helped me. So the first time I'm lifting this window by myself is over concrete in the Home Depot parking lot in the middle of the night <laughs> in the cold. So that was stressful, but it was fine. Actually, it's really not that heavy. It was just really wedged into the Corolla. Um, and yeah, so I got this car switched over and then I had to go drop the rental car and in the day when I picked it up, that was fine. I left the Suzuki, left Teddy in the Suzuki, walked over there, daylight, it was beautiful, like 60 degrees, nice and warm in the Suzuki because it's all windows. But at night when I had to drop the rental car, my coat was buried in the Suzuki. So I'm literally in like jeans and a long sleeve t-shirt in my beanie uh, through like this bad part of town and in the middle of the night cold and when I pulled away Teddy was in the Suzuki and he's like looking at me like why are you leaving me here in the middle of the night that was a really precious face I wish I had gotten a photo of that I'm in the Suzuki now and I have to get gas because it's empty and then I um was like okay I'll, I'll go get fast food or something somewhere because I haven't eaten dinner yet and it's like 10 but guess what it's a small town and since covid everything closes at like 9 or 10 and so there was nowhere to eat food and I hadn't eaten since lunch and so I'm hungry the Suzuki at least has a heater that's why I took it because the van's heater Cora had to bypass the van has no heat at least the Suzuki has heat so I'm like I'm not cold in the actual Suzuki it warms up and everything but I'm hungry and I'm tired it's a stressful day I get home and it's cold in the house obviously because I just have the wood stove so I'm like in the in the house all cold making a little turkey sandwich and sitting by the fire and I'm like I'm just cold and tired I want to go to bed and I crawled in bed and now today I can laugh about it so that's the story of how I got this window and you're probably thinking wow Heather must be a pretty good window to have gone through all of that no it actually needs a lot of work however in the amount of time that I looked at it at that guy's house I think it's work that I can do I don't even know when this video is going to go up this video might go up after Christmas and after all of that in which case this happened a long time ago and you guys are just now seeing it through the power of YouTube. Okay, old Ikea box. I really expected there to be spiders in there.
Okay, guys. It's here. It's like a little baby truck canopy. I put it this way, so at least it's not a bowl to collect rainwater. You guys want to guess how many spiders and things are living in it by the time I get to working on it? Leave a comment. I'll hold a lottery or a prize or something if you're right. <laughs> Whew. So the other thing I got from the wonderful... Oh, there's literally nothing that says Ikea on this. Wonderful. Okay. Ikea doors. Because I found out all of my clothes are bleaching from the sun. All the, not all of them yet, but like a lot of them that were more like prone to it, I guess. Like they have stripes on the top. Stuff here has stripes on the side. So I needed the doors. Peter blew down and shattered into a million little pieces. <sighs> That's a bummer. Hi guys. Um I am tired. <laughs> I have been working so much lately. But I guess that's kind of good because the weather's also been just garbage. I guess that means that it's time to do some more calm projects, you know? Not every project can be building a fence or stacking stones, so... I have these sweatpants that I ripped and we're gonna try mending, physical mending. Watched a lot of videos on TikTok. I'm not gonna pretend to be an expert. I literally have never done this before. So go watch other videos if you wanna know how to do this. I also thought that I could be like super smart and save a bunch of money. And instead of buying like the pre-made like grid templates for it, I could just buy them the sheets and print my own grid. Uh, but I bought the wrong kind of sheets. These are like iron-on ones, which are also washable and everything. So I do have a grid here. I got I got a grid printed out, <laughs> um, but it is not as nice of a grid as the stickers would have been. So that's kind of a bummer. But I got these sweatpants to try out with first because they're literally my dad's sweatpants from like 2000. <laughs> yeah, if it doesn't work, if I accidentally ruin these pants, then so be it, but. Figured I'd try and learn so I could be more sustainable. I have a whole stack of stuff, clothing wise, to mend, a sweater to unravel, and all that jazz. So I think I will just take you guys along with me while I try that out. So this is what we've got. This part was a little bit difficult because the iron-on got on kind of crooked. I think you usually go further out, but honestly, I was not feeling it. <laughs> so that's kind of what I did. That's one project down. You're on my shirt. This is my other project that I definitely want to use that transfer paper on, although Teddy's on the spot. There it is right there. Just a little one. But I really like this shirt. I mean, it's totally pitted out and everything, but I just really like the shirt. There's another one right there. I thought it would be kind of cool to like just basically cover the shirt in embroidery as, you know, as I wear holes into it. So I am going to try and find some cute stuff that I can print um, iron on and then just embroider over it like a plant leaf or something like that. So I just found some um, plain old drawings of like cactuses. I printed a bunch out actually. 
um, whole, whole page of them and cut them into little cards and stuff that I can use in the future. I'm using two on this project. Um, I don't know legally what the protocol is for this because it's just for my personal use, but they're from stock images anyway. So I don't think anybody right owns the rights to these drawings. I did, however, scorch my shirt ironing them on. So I am definitely going to be ordering the peel and stick version of this. It seems so much easier than getting the iron out. So that's a little bit of a bummer, but like I said, it's got it's got stains all over the place anyways. Like it's pitted out, so who cares? I mean, I think the point of this shirt, like over time, will be for it to just get totally patchworked together. So It's late. I can't say that I entirely enjoyed that process. I don't think embroidery is really my thing. I haven't done it since like high school. This embroidery floss is literally from high school. Um, I haven't washed off the extra stuff, but it's pretty much all gone. Uh, really am not a fan of this transfer paper that I got. But this is one of them. I don't think I'm going to do the second one uh, now at least. I didn't use a stabilizer, so that's probably not a good thing. <laughs> uh, and also, you know, you get the rough stuff on the back. So I think I'm going to try it on and see if I even mind this. This part's on the back, it's fine, but the other one's on the front. I think I would, I think I would probably feel it with how, like, front and center it is, so... not yet heated this room up <laughs> so I'm all bundled up but I wanted to start on this project because I'm really excited about it this is one of the sweaters I assume you can see this on the camera um one of the sweaters that got a sun bleach from my doors being off my closet and I think it's high enough quality um because it's land's end I think that it's like actually knit like I don't know enough about this honestly I have not ever unraveled anything before but I have my seam ripper and so I figured I would just try and take it apart and see if I got one nice long piece of uh, string out of this because obviously if you re-knit something with this even the pieces of bleach like they wouldn't line up in the same spot again so you probably wouldn't even be able to, to, to notice it would be like here like a speck here 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 you know what I mean so I'm going to try and unravel this and see if it unravels. And if it doesn't, then like whatever, it was pretty much ruined anyways. I guess the only thing I could have done at this point would be maybe bleach it. But um, the thing I loved about the sweater is the color. I think it's nice color on me. So <sighs> fingers crossed this sweater can be unraveled. I don't know what this goes to, but we will rip it and find out. That's one whole sleeve. That's crazy. That's awesome. Oh my gosh. So worth it. And also because this is 100% cotton, I'll just use it as a fire starter. No waste. Okay. I moved the winder. I think this might work even better. Sweater's been sitting here for months. Okay. Well, if you need me, this is what I'm going to be doing for the next like three hours. Alrighty, I ended up with five balls of yarn and then 
a pretty small pile of scraps. Um, I am gonna just burn the collars, but for the big band on the bottom, I did unravel that. Um, it seems like the last couple of strands of that doesn't unwind very well, so I didn't stress out and um, spend a bunch of time on it. I just did what wanted to. Um, so each of these has a couple of joins in it, but um, I'm happy with it and I have learned how to do a join that doesn't come apart. So um, I feel pretty confident that this yarn will be nice to use when I go to use it. What I do with it is a problem for future Heather. At least now the sweater has gone and I don't have to stare at it and be sad about it anymore. I can stare at it and be excited for the future. So yeah. Okie dokie guys. Some more rainy, gloomy day activities. I polished. They're kind of wet, so you can't quite see it. That's the original. Original versus polished. I didn't get them perfect, and I really didn't do the back much. <laughs> um, but they are knobs to go on my new closet door. Literally took me two hours to polish those two and my finger feels like it's gonna fall off. So I am giving up for now <laughs> and uh, we'll get the last one some other rainy day. I've ever seen this part of the house before uh mostly because this is the bedroom which is one cold because that window is very drafty I need to fix it uh two that door is always closed because of that window in this room being cold and three because this room is just a huge mess <laughs> I cannot wait for me to have a storage shed and I can put the stuff that needs to go into storage in there I can work on this room and like like in my head, this is gonna be the first room that's finished. Um, and I guess that just goes to show you how far away that actually is. Um, regardless, this is where I put the sewing cabinet I thrifted. I freaking love it. The sewing machine just lives down there. It's one of the lift ups, but this machine won't fit on the lift up. So it's okay. I just kind of like position this permanently and then I just plug it in. Uh, and it's still a lot easier than like taking it in and out of a box or something like that. So. I'm happy with my setup and we're gonna take in that skirt that I thrifted in the last video. So wish me luck because I'm really not the sewer. <laughs> okay, so there's a seam on the side and I think we need to start inside out obviously so that it's facing the right way. I guess I need to try this on again and determine how much I want to take in. I think I just need a zigzag stitch over all this and it'll work. Let me go try it on first though. The waist now fits, it's not gonna fall off. Um, as you can see, I made myself a little pocket. So basically I think all I need to do is kind of taper it out to about mm, here-ish, that stitch where I took in all the fabric and then it'll basically be unnoticeable. Alrighty, this is the finished product. What do you think? Is it perfect? No. But on a flowy skirt like this, can you tell? This is the side I did. I think it looks pretty good. I'm happy with it. No one will ever know. Alrighty, I got the doors on and have been using some tape as 
poles, but I've got the handles all polished up and so I think it's time to fix that. All right, bye bye tape. Oh yeah, that's way better. I just cannot wait until I can get some veneer for this because these Ikea wardrobes don't come in very exciting colors. This is as far as you're gonna get polished either. Oh well, I'm happy with it. All right, so Teddy and I are getting ready to go to Agility, but I wanted to show you guys the t-shirt first because it's finished. So that's the back, you saw it already. This is the front, you haven't seen this one yet. There you go. Yeah, I can't feel them at all. I thought I would be able to feel them and then it would bother me, but it doesn't bother me. So let's go, let's go to Agility. What are you? Weirdo, you little weirdo. <laughs> yes, I am aware that I have a hole in the butt of these jeans. I have not gone around to fixing those yet. <sighs> Never ends. people can <laughs> and talk at the same time gonna be a little slow but also like this stitch is kind of finicky you're like all the way in the back and it's kind of tight and the yarn is kind of small the needle is kind of small if you didn't notice this is from the sweater and uh, this while it doesn't look like much is gonna be the bottom band for a new sweater I should say sweater vest though, because I definitely don't have enough yarn to make another sweater, especially since crocheting takes more yarn than knitting does as a rule. But anyways, since I've got you here, I might as well do the comment of the day that I started doing in my last video. So at World New Reality, Reality? Reality. Anyways, their question is, what is the difference between a homestead and a home? It's a wonderful question. Okay, so when people say homestead, there's kind of two things that they could mean, at least in my perspective. You could mean like the act of homesteading or you could mean like architecturally slash historically a homestead. So homesteading is like the act of being like self-sufficient, more eco-friendly, more sustainable, like gardening and making your own food and um, composting and um, capturing rainwater. And there's a lot that goes into homesteading and you might do some of those things and not other things. Um, but like, it's just kind of a way of lifestyle where you're like working the land, so to speak. Um, 
I'm obviously not there yet because I'm still remodeling this house and if I had a big garden and animals and stuff I would have no time to work on the house itself so homesteading is the goal however I am in the situation where I still get to call it a homestead because historically this is a homestead so what that means is like back in ye olden days um, when the West was unsettled they just wanted white people to move to the West and in order to do that they made like the Homestead Acts um, that basically said if you came and claimed the land by building a house and improving the land then it was yours we would give you the rights to the land um, so in this area there was actually multiple Homestead Acts but the first Homestead Act was tracts of 160 acres so the huge chunks of land but then uh, when we got further and further in time, um, they broke the sections of land smaller and smaller and kind of increased the requirements of what improving the land constituted. So when it was 160 acres, you could build a really small house and it counted um, and there weren't necessarily building codes and stuff like that. When this house was built, you had a 400 square foot minimum and they were five acre parcels. That's what like the root of this house is, is the original 400 square feet. This section of the house that we're in right now is an addition to that. They were like kits basically um, that they made hundreds of them. So all out in the desert, if you pay attention, you'll notice there's only like four houses out here. We all have the same house and it's just whether you've had an addition or you've changed or anything like that anyways thank you for the comment i'm sure a lot of people were thinking it too so i'm glad that i had a chance to explain my thought process behind it and everything um oh the other thing that i wanted to uh mention to you guys i don't know if you noticed um but there are some sneaky little drone clips in this video someone got me a drone um that someone being you guys i have been wanting a drone for years and you guys finally made it happen for me with adsense so uh thank you thank you thank you thank you hopefully you guys enjoy those shots i just was like playing around doing some test shots and stuff um but i can't wait to use it in my new videos and yeah thank you and uh, if you want to continue to help out the channel, um, like, subscribe, commenting really helps um, the algorithm to know that the video is good because you guys are like engaging with it with comments and everything. I think that's everything, guys. See you later.